Animism is a relational spiritual path that can be challenging because there's no dogma. Your walk is your walk. Fortunately, there are lots of tools that everyone can use to help with that, and one of them is stories. We all have stories that we just make up. If you're feeling stuck or disconnected, maybe it's time to use new stories to grow beyond your old stories. We all are running programs in our heads that we use to run our lives. And they can be things like, I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. Everybody leaves me. I'm not worthy. I'll never be anything. I'm bad. I'll never have anything. The world's against me. I don't belong anywhere. I can't succeed. The world's a dangerous place. The world is full of bad people and dangerous events. I won't deny that. But it's also full of beautiful things and joyous events. It's the yin and the yang. It's everything. The view depends on what you're focusing on. The roses or the thorns. And stories show us how to see the roses. David and Goliath is the story of a child who brought down a giant with a slingshot. So while you appear small and insignificant and weak to others, you really know that you're capable of mighty things that others who don't know better won't even take on. The tortoise and the hare teaches us to never give up. Be like earth, persevere, and you'll get there. Lao Tzu's story of the tree that survived the carpenters is a lesson in being truly human. It says that if you want freedom, don't become a commodity that can be bought and sold. Being wild and sovereign may mean being overlooked, but it also means that you can be you. The ugly duckling is similar. We may be unappreciated and misjudged by those who can't see our beauty until we grow into it and it becomes obvious. It could also be dangerous to let others' views of us determine our view of ourselves. Frozen is the story about um, being different, struggling with emotions, and finally getting to a place of self-acceptance. If this is you, you're not alone. There's a way to peace and that is through self-acceptance. The story of Orpheus and Eurydice could be a metaphor about the power of love to revive the dead and how important it is to trust. It also speaks to how damaging doubt can be. There are stories that show us how to deal with adversity, stories that point to truths, stories that inspire us, and show us how to avoid problems. If you want to live in a relationship with the universe in an authentic way, you need to become aware of the stories you tell yourself and the stories you tell about others. So tell affirming stories about yourself and others and find strength and skills that you need in those stories. Every story has a villain. The villain gives you the way to become the hero of your own story, so it's purposeful. And we can focus on the villain and let that be a reason to be less than, or we can rise to the challenge and let it be the catalyst that launches us to greatness. If the story is that the deck is stacked against us because of oppression, be David. Use your smallness as an advantage. If the story is that we're being limited by poverty, we can either live large in spirit or we can be the tortoise who keeps going until he reaches his goal. If the problem is that love hurts, maybe the problem is that you're being Orpheus and not trusting enough. Some of us express our animism in our relationship with animals primarily, with plants, the mineral kingdom, or with spirit. Maybe those are easier because they don't have emotions the way the humans do that can trip us up and hurt us. All relationships are important, but I tend to talk about the human ones because I think that they're the ones that have the ability to teach us the most about ourselves and the experience of being human. And once we're on the road to being our best selves, we can relate to the rest of the world in an authentic way. So I hope your animus practice includes loving and relating to other humans and yourself in a compassionate way, especially as we move into the season of love. I'm Laura Giles with Pan Society. Love to you all, and I'll see you next week. Ciao.